Zoom. I'm sorry, Zoom. I just am introing people. Um, emo music, McCormack, the birthday girl. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, emo. Thank you. So basically, today, there's a lot of good stuff going on. We're going to be talking about election day. And we're going to be talking about the fact that it's emo's birthday. Of course. Emo, queen, how are you feeling? Hi, old. Oh, hold on. Can you hear me? Hold there we go. Can I got it. My... Yeah. Hi, I feel old. Just kidding. I just feel tired. And it's not a good birthday if I don't feel at least tired. Emo um, is 21. I'm 21 today. 20. Yay! What's not plus 10? 21. 21. That was going to be my Instagram caption. As it should be. <laughs> today, I turned to 9 plus 10. As it should be. Yeah. I'm That's glad. Cool. I'm glad we've decided on that. Yeah. 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 Let me make 10. Woo! Woo! Okay. Thank you, darling. You're the best. So, we're doing this thing today where we're going to play some some other things from the from News Lab's focus feature oh, last okay. night that that aired last night on Hawk Plus. Um so it's all about election day cuz today is the midterm day elections. Uh we also will be broadcasting that the live elections from 8 p.m. to midnight or however long uh we need to broadcast the election coverage. So, we are going to start off today by playing a clip from the School of Communication and Media's News Lab broadcasted Focus Vote 2022 last night. So here's a highlight. That's so great that I can't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Try again. Zoom fader. Oh, yeah, Zoom fader's on and up. Lara, sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Screw it. We're having a great time here. Wiki, wiki, wiki. On the morning buzz. We have technical difficulties every time we try to do something like fun and extra. And, you know. So real. Well, here we and, go. And so Do you want me to do we turn real. up the aux? This be is, real. Be real. It's time to be real. It is not time to be real just yet. Not, not yet. yet. They'll tell me later. But we're just working on it. Is it ready? uh, 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 okay, so what we do while we're waiting? Uh, uh, why? why? <laughs> okay, we're now right in. Lara is currently trying to get her laptop to work. There's the smoke coming out of her ears. You know, she's sweating. Moms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. No, you can't do that. It's echoing. I'm telling you, it's echoing. Is your laptop sound on? Nah. Our listeners are getting a glimpse. I'm so sorry. On. This is what we do. Try. No. Nothing. We've got nothing. This is a mess. 
This is why we don't do things. <laughs> you know what? Sorry, How about just see the, I'm going to throw it over because while Lara figures out technical difficulties, I'm going to throw it over to the love doctor, Ian Love, for his news update. News update. Ian? Yeah. You want to give me oh, yeah. the I'd news love update? i to give you a news update. You're the best. Hi, my name is Ian Love, and you're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. In national news, the National Park Service issues a statement warning citizens all over the nation to avoid licking toxic psychedelic toads. It has been revealed that the Sonoran Desert Toad emits a toxin through its skin that makes humans sick if ingested. The reason some people are drawn to lick these amphibians are due to the potential of their toxin to cause a psychedelic effect. But even then, the toxins still make humans sick, so it's best to avoid the toad at all costs. In statewide news, a former Kmart in New Jersey is amping up to be turned into an indoor go-kart track. Monaco Indoor Karting is setting up shop at the abandoned building in Berlin, New Jersey, setting up 60, 000, oh, 62,000 of the 92,000 square feet available. There is not yet an opening date. The attraction is set to feature 32 go-karts, an arcade, rock climbing, and more. In local news, the Montclair Township Animal Shelter will be starting its Pets for Vets program this year. From now until Saturday, December 3rd, any pet over a year old will be adoptable for only $5 for those who are in active duty, their immediate families, those who have left the military, veterans with disabilities, and those who have been honorably discharged. Pictures of all the pets that can be adopted are on Pet Finder under Montclair Township Animal Shelter. The current weather is sunny with a high of 57 and a low of 40, with a humidity level of 53 and good air quality with a level of 29. My name is Ian Love, and this has been your 7 a.m. news report. Brilliant. As per usual. Amazing. I'm super excited for that Pets for Vets thing. Stunning. I Those those, those frogs, really. Yeah, we're going to get you, into I that a little bit more. Laugh. I couldn't help but laugh. I'm sorry. We'll get into that later, though. Thank you, Ian. That was amazing. Of course. Now we have... For her debut here on the Morning Buzz, my rising star, Ella Rising. Can you give me the sports updates? Of course I'll give you a sports update. This week's Monday Night Football was hosted by the Saints, who lost to the Ravens 27-13. to Lamar Jackson hit a huge milestone with his 100th career touchdown pass to start the game. Going to the NBA, the Knicks defeated the Timberwolves 120-107 to with Julius Randle leading scores with 31 points and 8 rebounds. The New York Islanders beat the Calgary Flames in an overtime match with goals scored by Anders Lee and Kyle Palmieri. Yesterday, it was announced that our women's soccer team will be hosting Lynchburg in the first round of the NCAA tournament, making this the team's first tournament appearance since 2017. Back to you. Thank you so Ooh, much. What Ella. a debut. What a day of you. Absolutely so stunning. So we're going to try one more time for this focus thing. Really bad. Just don't share it on the Zoom and it won't do the thing because my Zoom's on and your Zoom's on. So I'm just a lot smarter than you and that is okay. Girl. Is that like that? No. Play it. Wait, hold on. Try. No, I'm getting nothing. So you know what we're gonna do? Sorry. Lara is really struggling right now, and that's okay. We could probably Zoom. I'm sorry if you can't hear us half the time. We're just working with stuff right now. Um, why don't you do the thing where you play it from your phone? I'm doing. I'm so glad you've decided on that. Lara is really struggling this morning. We're really struggling. But it's still Emo's birthday. <laughs> and that's all that matters. That's so real. Emo, how are you going to celebrate your birthday today? Um, I'm going to be celebrating my birthday with a very exciting going to class at 2.30. Mm, yeah. okay. Delightful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a class that I enjoy. It's writing for the feature film, so oh, it'll be cool. fine. That's so cool. Um, and then I might have um, a guest come at some point during the day, um, even though I didn't hear that. Hi, Mom. Um, and, and, uh, Kyle's coming up later. My boyfriend, I'm going to go out to dinner with him tonight. So I'm looking forward to that. Night you Kyle. Um, we're going to a steakhouse. I do it. Oh, I love like like a steakhouse. Yeah. I'm so excited for you to experience your 21st birthday. 
Cheers. Cheers. All right. Clean cheers. Absolutely brilliant. I think Lara's got it figured out to die. All right, let's do it. Gen Z. Gen Z. Generation Z. The youngest are 12. The oldest are 25. We are the group that is taking the world by storm. As the first generation to grow up completely online, we have a different perspective on everything from mental health to news consumption. This shift has caused concern for traditional media outlets looking to connect with our generation. According to a joint study by the University of Oxford and Reuters, young people consume news differently. The role of news for young people appears primarily individualistic. It's about what it can do for them as individuals rather than for society as a whole. Most traditional news brands are still not associated with being useful, interesting, or fun. Among the reasons for the shift, lack of relevance in the news agenda, negativity in the news, the same old formats, and just how negative the news cycle is. Professor Tara George is the head of journalism at the School of Communication and Media here at Montclair State University. I have been teaching journalism to college students for 20 years and there's definitely been some changes over those 20 years. There are three things that students I think think about when it comes to news. Number one is it's negative. Number two they don't want to pay for it and number three there's so much of it they can't tell the difference between what's good and what's not good. And of course Stress levels have shot up due to social media oversaturation. College students at the moment um, do have higher levels of anxiety. They've grown up with a phone in their hand and they are exposed to this massive amount of information. Meet students Marielle Arroyo Cabrera and Ian Karaoke. Marielle is a sophomore with a love for rugby and dancing. I asked her about her news consumption habits. In a way, because we're more pessimistic or like we know that the news are pessimistic themselves and we don't want that much negativity. Ian, a filmmaking major with a minor in business analytics, is more interested in the artistic side of life. But his news habits are traditional, thanks to his parents. My parents always like grew up in the house. Like it was always like CNN, Fox, ABC, like always. They always watch the news. So like I kind of saw it. But even Ian can't resist the urge of social media. So much of our lives are like involved like in our phones and online, you know what I mean? So a lot of the media we really care about and the news we really care about is what's happening with celebrities, pop culture figures, what's happening in, you know, the big the big industries that are making a lot of money that people just kind of forget to care about like the, the big world problems unless it's trending, you know what I mean? When it comes to the switch from traditional news to newer, more personalized ways to consume daily news content, Montclair professor Christopher McKinley doesn't see it as necessarily a bad thing. 25, you know, the 25% of people under 30 get their news from TikTok. I don't think we should completely dismiss that as like a bad thing, because I think what it means is that um, there's newer ways in which young people can get exposed to news content that maybe previously they would have never even come across. Wow, guys, that was stunning. Can I just say, this is a funny joke. So the guy that they interviewed was Ian Karaoke. And your name is Ian Love, Ian. Whoa. So hear me out. <laughs> no. For the love of karaoke. Please don't. You guys should go on happy. <laughs> Please don't. That should go on happy hour. <laughs> I think that was so good. Happy hour. Please. That was so that was so good. You know it was. It's okay to appreciate my joke. I'll give you a it better be a 10 half out of 10. Clap. Ah. Ooh, half clap. That was just evil. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. though, <laughs> I'll remember that. It wasn't not warranted, you know. You know, love you so much. That was so good. For the love of karaoke. For the love of God, get into the first story. Please. <laughs> <laughs> You're <Damn> awful. <laughs> love right. you. So NJ elections 2022. Yeah. Here's everything you need to know about voting and the candidates. Election day is literally here. Voters today will finally answer the biggest question hanging over New Jersey politics for months. Will Democrat Tom Malinowski go back to Washington, D.C. next year, representing the 7th Congressional District? Having barely fended off a challenge two years ago from Republican Tom Kane, Jr. Malinowski 
faces the former state senator again, but in a much more difficult environment. Not only does the party in power usually face face large defeats in a presidential midterm, congressional redistricting last year added Warren County and towns in Sussex County to the sprawling 7th district, areas that tend to vote Republican. But that's not the only congressional race to watch. Democrat in- incumbent. I think that's the word. Mm -hmm. Uh, Andy Kim faces the prospect of an upset by Republican challenger Bob Healy in the third congressional district in Burlington and Ocean Counties. The deadline to register has already passed and early in-person voting, which debuted last year, ran from October 29th to November 6th. Polls open today, election day at 6 a.m. So they've already opened and they close at 8 p.m. Vote by mail ballots can also be returned to your county board of elections or a designated secure drop box by 8 p.m. tonight. They can also be returned by mail as long as they are postmarked by November 8th and received by November 14th. It's voting day. Yeah. Oh, I love that Lara's just standing behind. It kind of snuck up on <laughs> us in my opinion i feel like no actually though like i was like wow today's there and i yeah. was like oh i don't really feel ready but mm-hmm. i guess yeah. i guess we have no choice now. i've been doing a lot of collaborations with our news director here at wmsc hannah cox because they're doing <laughs> their they're doing their election night coverage and i it was just so random she was like elections midterm elections are next week and i was like right oh, okay that's amazing i'm so glad I had no, I did not realize how close they were because there wasn't, I feel like there wasn't too much talk about it. Maybe I just don't pay attention that often. That's well, true. Midterms are still very important because the Senate and all are what really make the rules. And, right. then, you know, the president just kind of signs off on them. No, nobody makes a big deal out of them, but they probably they, should. They really should. And what I really appreciated was um, my supervisor, as some may know, I am an RA on campus and they sent us a little flyer to send to our residents about like, where to vote because if you're a college student and you're living on campus it's a little really difficult to kind of get off campus if you don't have a car yeah if you don't know how to use public transport and things um so i'm gonna i'm gonna say where polling locations are for our college students yeah. so there's saint george antitakian orthodox church uh that's on long hill road in little falls that's more if you live on campus for blanton matruga all them um in Clifton, there's one at School 16, and in Montclair, there's also one at the Bradford School, um, Bradford School 87. So, if you're on campus, those are the polling locations that are really nearby. And I think, yeah, Lyft is also doing a thing too, um, where if you put in mm-hmm. some sort of code, you can get like. And we also have two places to put your absentee ballots because you have till 8 p.m. tonight, right? Which is one is by Machuga. And the other one is by Red Hawk Parking Deck. That's so, where the other one was. Yes. I could. Is it by the the statue? Or yes, no? I think so. I think it's by the around that area. Rocky statue. I'm sure you'd be able to find so, it. There's a mailbox there. And honestly, if you're interested, your local RA or any honestly campus leader knows pretty much where they are. They can point you mm-hmm. in the right direction if you're interested and has all these resources. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure this flyer has locally been yeah. circulating anyway. Especially since, especially with the absentee ballots, since there's a, a lot of students who are from out of state or even out of county. Right. You know, and because like out of county, you still have to do your absentee because you're not voting. You wouldn't be voting in your county. Exactly. If you came and voted like by campus. So the absentee ballots are very important, especially when you are a resident on campus. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we just gave you all the information. Now that's up to you to do what you wish. Sometimes I wish that <laughs> I could vote for Montclair or whatever. What kind of are we in? Essex. Or Essex. I, so, so I, like, I just feel like I spend more time up here now. Exactly. <laughs> you Agreed. feel that? Yeah. I really feel like I spend more time up here. I don't know what the criteria is to yeah. be able to vote in a certain county. You have to be a resident of it. So technically, I, mean, I guess. Like a permanent resident. Uh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense then. Well, so, shout out Camden County. <laughs> Shout out Camden County. Camden That's County where and I are from. So, oh, although I don't know if I'm still Camden County. Is Berlin Camden County? Oh, are we Gloucester County? Maybe. I really don't know. TV Stay TV. tuned to find out. <laughs> Shout out to the counties. Anyways. Shout out to the counties. Anyways, the counties also have been dealing with inflation. <laughs> Yay. Because, you know, inflation has hit us hard in the past coming months. Honestly, arguably a couple years. But it's one of the top issues for this week's um, midterm elections. So 
Like a movie monster in the 1970s, inflation is back and drawing crowds at the polling stations near you. Rising prices are the number one concern for voters in the year's midterm elections, outpacing abortion, crime, and other hot-button issues. According to the latest from NPR polls, more than one in three voters cited inflation as their most pressing priority. Preserving democracy was a distant second. Republicans were seen as better than Democrats at tackling inflation by a wide margin. The election comes as consumer prices are climbing at near the fastest pace in four decades. Annual inflation in September was at 8.2 percent. That's down only slightly from 9 percent rate in June, which was the highest since 1981. The surge in prices has also fueled anxiety among Americans who are paying more for gasoline, groceries, and other necessities. Inflation was not on the radar two years ago. Inflation was of little concern when President Biden first took office, although the pandemic has definitely triggered isolated price increases for things like lumber. The overall cost of living was climbing at less than 2% per year. Wow. Not surprised here. Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> That like what more is there to say? That's, it. That's the tweet. Everybody's tired of it. The past at least couple of months when it, we have endured the gas prices, grocery store re- prices are going up and things. People are tired of you it. You know what I was upset about? What? Is that I was the gas prices were finally starting to go down. Mm-hmm. And it was like a good $30 to get my gas. Yeah, down. right. And then I went to go get gas like two days ago and it was like $45. And I was like, where did that come from? I think what happened? It was like I know that's, I checked, that's cheap for other people, like three eighty ish, right? Yeah, like, like around three seventy something. Yeah, it, you, it was lower at one point. It though. was. Right it was like down to like three twenty five at one point or something like that. You know, and I'm like forty five dollars. No, I know some people pay like a hundred something dollars for gas, and yeah, they that's like insane. Can't. Yeah, it, that is insane. And it was it actually was brought up in the focus thing last night because um because a guy was saying that he had it kind of opened his eyes more to stop you know it was hard for him because he went on like drives mm. to like calm his mind and all and he couldn't wow. do that as much because he was paying a hundred dollars for gas a week yeah that you can't be doing that i wonder what car he had mm, probably like a truck or something because it's, that's it's my guess when you have a car that really guzzles gas like mm-hmm. those cars do but i think if people want to have larger cars i yeah. think you know i like gas prices shouldn't be that expensive period but you already know that you're signing up for that when you get a big car like that but a hundred dollars for one tank luckily i drive a little car Mm -hmm. and she takes 45 dollars. my little mitsubishi does me well that's even a lot for me like when it was like when gas prices were like you know under two dollars and all i was paying like 20 bucks for gas yeah and that was that was the time my little mitsubishi i pay I still pay like 20, 25 for my gas. I know it's crazy. I don't know how. How? I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Blessed and I'm over here stressed. What? I know, but I understand the struggle. I used to have a Toyota Camry and that would really guzzle gas and like it would do okay. But that was like 40 hours to fill that tank. But this, I don't think I'm like 25 right now and I'm living. Wow. Because, you know, that RA stipend be a little tight, you know? Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, sometimes those paychecks on campus, that rec paycheck. You y'all get paid more than me. That's get, true. Don't start. That's all, but the, but we're only allowed to work so many hours a week. Okay, real. You know, because I mean, so am like I. no more than twenty hours a week. Mm. And we're like, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. And then we were like even talking about in the elevator before as we were coming up here, we were talking about shoes and how like shoes are oh you can't pay, yes can't even pay you can't pay less than seventy dollars for a pair of shoes I agree. at this point. And it's like. On top of inflation, it's just kind of insane how much value we put on material yeah. goods. So, no, and it's true. And then when inflation goes up, those material goods that we value so much all of a sudden are absolutely incomparably expensive. And I don't get that. No, yeah, 100%. Like, first of all, RIP to the sneakerheads. I know mm. you guys are suffering. I don't know if any of you guys are sneakerheads here in studio. But... Are y'all sneakerheads? Nah. No. No, I'm getting a lot of head shakes. No. Good. <laughs> good it'd be rough out there for you right okay. now yeah so while i check my pockets to mm-hmm. make sure there's any cash left <laughs> we're gonna go on a quick break here on the morning buzz when we come back we're gonna have some more focus stuff we're gonna have some more talks about the midterms and all that good jazz and it's still emil's birthday happy birthday emil happy thank birthday, you emil. all right so we're gonna be right here back here on the morning buzz stay tuned
Hello, all my party people. It is me, the original what? King hey. Julian. I feel like it's a choice and I don't think that it should be completely taken away from us like that. I asked senior women on Montclair State University's campus, would you take a job in a state that would pay less but would support you more with reproductive rights? With the overturning of Roe vs. Wade that came in the summer of 2022, this is an important question women in Blue State, New Jersey have to ask themselves. For Olivia Bonkowski, a senior nursing major going into labor and delivery with an obstetrics specialty, the answer is easy. As a nursing student, again, going into that profession, um, there's so many risks for pregnancy complications in patients, such as um, ectopic pregnancy and um, postpartum hemorrhage. I just don't feel comfortable denying or delaying medication for a patient that's time sensitive. Bonkowski explains there are medications that could help and are time sensitive, but in red states that do not protect reproductive rights could be seen as a form of birth control or cause an abortion. This makes the choice very easy for her to make. But for other women on campus, the question becomes harder to answer. I want to say yes, um, through and through to my core, I am a feminist. But I also um, want to take a step back, too, because I think about privilege. And I know that not everyone has the privilege to be able to say automatically, I would go, I would do that. I would probably consider it because I don't really... I think I could probably have a better quality of life in a state that fights for women's freedom to make that kind of choice. Um, however, the, the question becomes more difficult because now I have to consider like, you know, do I put money second? Since January of 1973, women thought they would not have to worry about their reproductive rights again after Roe vs. Wade established a woman's right to choose by the Supreme Court. Until now. 
But in June of this year, Roe was overturned, leaving each state to decide whether to restrict or protect abortion rights. This has led to fear and worry among tens of millions of women. Monica Taylor is Director of Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies at Montclair State University, as well as Faculty Advisor for the Planned Parenthood Group on campus. She wasn't shocked, but disappointed at the overturning of Roe vs. Wade. When I was in college as a senior in 1989, I marched on Washington for women's rights to, for pro-choice. Um, and I really thought that this was something that we would just always have as a legal right. Some students have the same concerns Taylor does about picking a state to live in. I have a lot of close friends. Um, I have some friends in Georgia and Florida, and I know that they have been vocal about it being like them being nervous about it and saying like something were to happen, even if a doctor could deny me access to birth control, I have to be quick to get on a plane and come to Jersey. All three women feel extremely lucky to live in New Jersey where their rights will still be protected, but the choice of leaving for a job in a red state still lingers in the back of their minds. I haven't met anybody who has had a challenge with it. I do know people who have had to, you know, use, you know, those resources though to get the help that they need. And I'm glad that, you know, we live in a state that has that and is easily accessible. Um, I remember some of my friends and family, like when the whole thing just got like announced, a lot of people were like, we're, oh, well, we're safe. We're in New Jersey. Like, so we don't have to worry about it. Career versus the right to choose. What would you choose? For Focus Vote 2022, what's at stake? I'm Erin Muller. I mean, I know exactly what I would choose. Oh, Zoom's already unmuted. How delightful. Um, I know what I would choose. I don't know about you guys, but we won't get into that. But that was a lovely piece, I I would say. It was very lovely. And, you know, there are a lot of things that are going on with the midterm elections and around it and just what encompass it. And one of those things is Nancy Pelosi. Um, she's been going through it recently. Um, her husband was attacked. And so Nancy, she says that her husband's attack, well, somebody was, okay, so if you don't know, somebody was supposed to, or somebody was going to attack Nancy Pelosi. Um, they ended up attacking her husband instead. So after this attack uh, her hus on her husband, it will defect on her decision on whether to retire after the midterm elections. So voters are casting early ballots in the midterm elections that will determine control, control of the House and Senate as candidates try to muster last minute support. Democrats are trying to cling to their majorities in Congress for the final two years of President Joe Biden's first term. Republicans are favored to win control of the House, while the race for the Senate control appears tight. The president has had a busy weekend com campaigning for Democrats in tight races in New York and Pennsylvania, where former President Barack Obama joined to help Senate candidate John Fetterman in his bid to best G GOP opponent Dr. Mehmet Oz. On Sunday, Biden campaigned for Democratic New York Governor Kathy Hochul, Hochul, I'm so sorry, who is facing an unexpectedly tight race against Republican U.S. Rep. Lee Zeldin. Another former president, Bill Clinton, campaigned with Hochul in Brooklyn on Saturday, along with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. As of yesterday evening, voters have already cast more than 42 million ballots of the, in the midterm elections. Election officials and U.S. prosecutors will be keeping a close watch on the polls for any signs of voter intimidation on Tuesday, including in 24 states where the Justice Department will send poll monitors. And Nancy Pelosi, she is still deciding whether to retire after the midterm elections. I'm not surprised because given January 6th, given the attack on her husband, I wouldn't be surprised if she decided yeah. to take a step back from politics just because at this point her own safety yeah. is at risk. When her husband got attacked, one of the things that the perpetrator said while he was breaking into their home was, where's Nancy? And mm -hmm. if that person felt compelled to harm a politician because of any harmful ideologies that were yeah. instilled upon him, disinformation that was instilled upon him, there are far more people who feel the same way. And I think despite what you feel about Nancy Pelosi, 
violence is never warranted in any no. situation. She's still a human being. She's still a human being at the end of the day. And also to step back from politics because of this situation is completely warranted as well because mm-hmm. your well-being, the safety of your family always comes first. Yeah. And that was horrifying to of hear course. when it came out. Yeah, when we actually, we were talking about this on my show yesterday, Off the Rails, Mondays, 5 to 6 p.m. Um, Sorry, that was a really bad spot for a plug. We were talking about this yesterday and me and Lauren who is my roommate slash assistant. Um, and we were saying that it's, you know, being in the spotlight like that, it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. And everybody wants to be in the spotlight until they are. Exactly. And, and there's all eyes on them. And the chances of things like this happening are very high. Right. And it, it's awful. And the the thing about this is that when this happened, um, in my media ethics class, we talk a lot about... Um, disinformation and how harmful disinformation can really warp someone's perspective on things and warp someone's perspectives on different individuals we talked about pizzagate we talked about things that happened at duke college like so many years ago and why i bring this up is because i hope with this election i always hope with different elections but it never seems to come true where during elections i really hope that individuals really take the time to read up on their candidates and really understand their own stances on things certainly because it's important to be informed on these things it's important to be media literate as well because I Joe Biden had pointed out when this first happened that he really feels strongly that January 6th and the different different really harmful things that Donald Trump and like a a lot of other right-wing um conservatives say had a a lot to do with the attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband and a lot to do with different threats that people make towards different politicians you know what I mean yeah so for sure I think what's really important for this election is to promote people taking the liberties to read to yes, ask questions course. and to not blindly follow just so people like Nancy yeah. don't have to consider their entire career just because people are disinformed. Yeah, no, definitely. It's always important to read up on your candidates and and make sure you're you stay informed throughout all like the you know the years and yeah and all that stuff because it, it, it's important to know and you don't want to put the wrong people in office and all that good stuff. Exactly. Um so on that note we are going to take a quick break here on the morning buzz when we come back we will have another clip from focus 2022 but for now we have hold me down the unplugged version by the happy fits stay tuned here on 90.3 wmsc upper montclair where the happy fits enjoy
So I'm getting you right there. Hello. Yes. So we are back here on the morning buzz and we were just talking about basically, you know, knowing everything about your candidates and our country being divided. Um, so in our day and age, of course, our country is very divided due to political beliefs. Um, Bernice, one of the News Lab students, sat down with WNBC news reporter Brian Thompson about the divide of our nation. So here's the clip. Our country is extremely divided. That's not news to anybody. Um, and New Jersey is a blue state. Um, but are you seeing those divisions that are taking place in other states and across the country um, here in our little home state? The, the issue with New Jersey is that you have a a moderate wing of the Republican Party that still exists. Uh, it's the Tom Kane, the Christy Todd Whitman. You do go out into the extreme edges of New Jersey, whether it be Sussex, Warren County, uh, parts of Morris County, uh, down south, of course, uh, in deep south Jersey. And then you do find some of those extremes that you see elsewhere in the country. I asked Thompson if he thinks the economy will be the biggest issue in the midterms. No question that inflation is the top issue facing voters across this country. Inflation is pretty bad. It's not as bad as it has been in the past uh, in some years, but it's, you know, it's hurting people, no question about it. So those issues are winning issues for Republicans. And what happens if the Republicans take both the Senate and the House? Certainly would put uh, Menendez and Booker, our senators, um, in the minority, and they wouldn't have. And it's time. All right. Enough of this election talk, guys. I, I know. I know. I know. No but more being good citizens. <laughs> no more being good citizens. We've done too much of that today. So now we have our favorite segment of the week. Emo McCormack. Yay. It's your time. No, it's my turn. I'm so excited. For tunes. Tunes. Tunes on a Tuesday. I am very Tunes excited. On a birthday. Tunes on a birthday. Whoa. Well, I am very excited to be telling you guys all about the Tunes on Tuesday that will be playing on Tuesday, November 8th, my birthday. Woo. Woo. Today, 
Uh, Tunes on Tuesday, if you don't already know, is our weekly new music show curated by the music team here at WMSC. This week's interview is with New Jersey artist and creative director Karma, interviewed by Friday segment host Nicole Passaro. Karma talks about her recently released album, Faint of Heart, touching upon her recording process, and talks about working on songs that were written years ago, putting her feelings to paper with lyrics. She brought up she was brought up in a musical household listening to 60s and 70s songs throughout her whole life. He, she draws on personal experiences and self-reflection in her music, focusing on embracing who you are in your art and talks about her musical inspirations, including the likes of Beyonce and Usher and the process of writing her latest songs. Karma talks about the importance of staying humble and appreciative and talks about her motivation behind combining musical influences including genres hip-hop, R&B, and soul. She also talks about setting an example for others, including people of different racial backgrounds, her fellow musicians, and women in general, and talks about the importance of being daring and not holding back. She talks about um, the motivation behind the modeling aspect of her life, dancing and ballet, and participating in talent shows since she was young, she aspires to help other young artists and push them to follow her their dreams, wanting to give back to those who helped her along the way by paying it forward. Music from Karma, All Around, Wolf Fox, Sophia Jelani, and more on Tunes on Tuesday, which airs at 2 and 6 p.m. You can listen in for new music and good vibes. And if you missed last week's episode, no need to worry. All episodes are available on WMSCRadio.com. And now talking about tunes, I am going to be letting you all know, according to iHeartRadio, the top songs in the AAA adult alternative album chart. I'm so excited. Yes. So this week at number 10, we have Boy by the Killers, which is down two from last week, was number one on the rock alternative charts for a very long time, but is slowly making its way out of the top 10. Number nine is a song I just heard this morning and really enjoy a debut Runaway to Mars by Talk. Number eight is Stay Out of It by Michigander, up to from last week off of his upcoming EP, It Will Never Be the Same, expected in March 2023. Number seven, down two from last week, Here to Forever by Death Cab for Cutie from their latest album, Afsalt Meadows. Number six, up one from last week, Tonight by Phoenix, the first time that they featured anyone in their music is the lead singer from Vampire Weekend. Number five, also up one from last week, Miles and Miles by The Heavy Heavy from their debut EP, Life and Life Only. Number four, staying in the same position, is Bad Habit by Steve Lacey from his album, Gemini Rights. Number three, also staying in the same position from last time from their album, Lavender Days, The Otter by Camp. Number two is down one from last week, so dethroned from the, its number one position is Snap by Rosalyn from the album Snap Back. And number one this week, up one from last week, from the album of the same name released just last month is Stick Season by, Lo- by Noah Kahan. Yes. That's what I'm happy about. You know yeah. what? That's what I like to hear. Yeah, no, come on. <laughs> no, uh, number five really makes me laugh because the song is Miles and Miles, heavy, heavy, and yes. the album is Life and Life. <laughs> I know. That's I wonder so if they like using the same word twice. Yeah, I maybe it seems like a little bit that they do like to repeat their words. It might just be you know to emphasize. Mm. It's for emphasis. It's like super okay. heavy. There's a lot of miles and life is life and you know mm-hmm. it do be life i also can confirm that here to forever by death cab for cutie deserves to be in the top 10 mm-hmm. um, i did listen it. to it on email show last week last week yes nine of the times at 11 a.m on thursdays look at that i don't know no mo. i'm surprised steve lacy's music is still up there because of how he's been acting at his concerts lately oh i feel like i heard about this yeah he just has been pretty rude to his fans lately like um there's like times where i think someone was taking photos of him like or no i think someone threw a disposable camera onto stage and he crushed it and then someone else had asked while like you know when you're at a concert and they sing and then there's kind of a lull where everyone's just cheering and nothing's really happening someone yelled out can you say hi to my mom and he was like can you shut up and he was like oh and then just kept singing and oh. it's like oh it's God. funny but it's also very much not funny because i know that person was probably heartbroken and on mm-hmm. top of it it's just really per- un- unprofessional funny. way to carry yourself they, these people support you they're your fans and you're gonna act like that yeah it's not really embarrassing it. so. also 
get original Steve Lacey. That's bad habit. There's about a million songs named Bad Habit. <laughs> right. You have a couple yeah, bad habits of your own. Ooh. You need to work on those. Thanks. <laughs> work on it. That was great, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> maybe, maybe that song that song should dip and make room for new music. Real and allow Death Cab to move up. Yes, allow Death Cab to, to move up, please. Or Rights killers. for Death Cab. Or killers. or killers. Yeah, and the killers that boy has been doing really well in a lot of different charts. So it's like slowly leaving. Mm. And I listened to a bunch of countdowns and I feel like what determines a song that is truly good or one that is truly popular and not just like a random like oh really big for like the day is when it slowly leaves a countdown mm, so good for yeah. the killers that's real i feel like when it just like flops off off mm -hmm. of a countdown it was probably because it wasn't trending on tiktok anymore mm -hmm. but that's a hot take wow i mean you're kind of right because that's how i heard about stick season yeah and that same thing with bad habit like that's it's yeah. still kind of trending on TikTok right now. So, but mm -hmm. once it once people go move on to a different trend, it's gonna be off it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's like in the um the rock alternative chart. Tech it by Kafoon is really high up there. Oh my god, and yes, I absolutely love it. But I, I definitely heard it first on TikTok. Exactly. Um, and then there's also the song "Sex Drugs Etc." by Beachweather, and that song actually came out in 2016, and it's doing really well on a lot of alternative charts right now. Okay. And uh, I just found out recently what's interesting about that is the band actually broke up years ago. Whoa. And because of its resurgence on TikTok, they decided to get back together. So I'm curious to see what that means for their music. I feel like it could either be really beneficial and really inspiring to a group of people like, oh, this thing that we made is mm -hmm. turned out to be a great success. Let's make more of it. I'm hoping that they're not really forcing it because then that could make for not such a great yeah. <laughs> music making True. environment. That's fine. But uh, I'm looking out for what they have in the future. So, you know, there's a lot to say for a lot of good things or poor things to say about songs that make it big on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you know, if they're getting their name out there, then good for those artists, yeah. you know? Yeah. Honestly, I think it works. Yeah. I, a lot of, look, a lot of people dislike TikTok and they think it's awful, which I don't agree. But, you know, things like this are great. You know, it gets artists' names out there and either gives them a resurgence or it just gives them, you know, their opening to actually grow a fan base and and get their music out to people. And it, it's done it so many times, like truly like six seasons number one. Yeah. And I think and that's how I found out about that song was TikTok. TikTok, yeah. And the hard thing about it is though, what the artist should do after going viral on tech TikTok is the steps you take after yeah. just because with the way the digital age is and how people are constantly needing that instant validation once your trend flops and it's done it's done and as an artist it's very highly encouraged that you still have to put a lot more effort into like really holding the fan base yeah. longer than the tiktok trend just so you can still keep mm. that um type of recognition yeah. and stuff because tiktok is great like you said like once you get your music out there and your name out there you're good but then what happens after you know what i mean there's so many times where one like a one hit wonder situation is a lot more common than we think now just because yeah. of how fleeting mm -hmm. social media is which i find really interesting it's but so, it's so interesting. it's kind of like a double-edged sword situation you know yeah, what i mean like sure. you want to use tiktok for sure go use ahead TikTok to your advantage don't overuse on like don't expect don't expect the, i the feel like don't expect to be an a-list celebrity the next yeah. day because <laughs> you know you might be just like a yeah. one-hit wonder type thing the algorithm really does it it's it's all over the algorithm um Real? ian ella yeah. do you guys know any of the songs on this so this is kind of feeding into everything we've been saying. The only one here I recognize is Bad Habit by Steve Lacey. But to be fair, this isn't usually the genre that I'd listen to. Okay. Mm. All right. What's your vibe, Ian? What What is your so, genre? I switch back and forth a lot. Uh, a lot of... I do listen to a lot of alternative, but not a lot of the, like, modern mm. okay. alternative. I listen to a lot of stuff that's very like refine like do, like i don't branch out a lot with my okay. music <laughs> okay. fair enough i kind of stick to like what i know that i like what i'm comfortable with you like your ways i have like artists that i know that i'm like oh if they release a new album yeah i'll listen to it and most of the time i'm like yeah that's really good 
like I like albums that experiment a lot. Mm, okay. So it's it's all over the That's place. That's like a double edged sword. You like don't like different music, but then you like other people <laughs> when they experiment. The I like, I like yeah. when the artists that I really like try something different. Mm, okay. Interesting. What are, what are some of these artists? Okay, so the f- number one thing that comes to mind uh water parks yum you just heard laris yum. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> their 2021 album greatest hits i listen to it all the time right. it is it is an experience front like beginning to end just you, that's not an album you can like just passively listen to in the background that's when you have to be there and yeah. sentient to listen to because it's so gorgeous and oh. but water parks fall out boy panic at the disco uh, as you should it's your Lara's little screen in the background <laughs> panic at the disco is don't let the light go out is doing really great on a lot of alternative is charts it? as well yeah really? we don't need to get into the whole album because i know the room's general feelings about the lost saying, vengeance like i've got something from that album's doing well <laughs> think there's a couple oh, yeah. decent songs but then the rest of it is just either forgettable or just i can't bear to listen to <laughs> really unfortunate but very true and yeah I, I get it you know that's okay real ella how about you um, I actually probably have the most like basic and awful music taste in the entire world. No, world. do not um, say that. But I will say I watched SNL last week and Steve Lacey sang Bad Habit. And it really disappointed me, to be honest, because <laughs> when artists know when artists go on SNL, you sing something new so that oh, you can hear it. And he sang that song true. again. And mm-hmm. I was like, really? Because like, you know, because you want to know why he did that? Because it's probably his only good song. <gasps> oh, that's true. hot take. Like a, if you're going to make yourself like, if you're going to make yourself known through TikTok, you're going to want to have to take risks. If yeah. you want to like advance, because otherwise it would be too easy to kind of just like have one song get popular on TikTok and then just cling to that. And yeah, that mm-hmm. true. but like, that's what hey, people do. Look- that yeah, you're never going to get that fame. But if like, you claim but it's just, it just bothered me because like saturday night live like that's how artists get discovered with their new songs and he's saying that song that's probably it's not- because it's trending it's just- and they were like <laughs> song everyone knows you know and he was like yeah. my one hit wonder yes <laughs> he has some good look, songs look i'm sorry once you become rude i'm rude back oh and- real. <laughs> that's so true um but yeah so we're going to take a quick break here on the Morning Buzz on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And when we come back, we're going to be in our messy hour. Woo! It's because you're messy. Uh, <laughs> but for now, we have Here to Forever by Death Cab, which was number, what number was it? Number seven this week. <laughs> number seven this week. Ooh. Here to Forever, Death Cab for Cutie on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Stay tuned for more Morning Buzz.
And we are back here on the morning buzz. Yeah. Woo. You're on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Uh, I am your host, Gabby Lutz, joined in studio with my co-host, Terry Dickerson, our sportscaster, Ella Rising, my rising star, and then Ian Love, the love doctor. <laughs> and in the other studio, we have Emo McCormack, the birthday girl. Hi. 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 Okay. Hi. So it's messy hour, guys, because we're messy. So before we get started with messy hour, of course, we have to do the things to keep the lights on. The Love Doctor. Yeah. Do you want to give us our news up du- news update? Oh, I would love to. You're amazing. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ian Love, and you're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. In national news, the National Park Service issues a statement warning citizens all over the nation to avoid licking toxic psychedelic toads. It has been revealed that the Sonoran Desert Toad emits a toxin through its skin that makes humans sick if ingested. The reason some people are drawn to lick these amphibians is due to the potential of their toxin to cause a psychedelic effect, but even then, it still makes humans sick, so it's best to avoid the toad at all costs. In statewide news, a former Kmart in New Jersey is amping up to be turned into an indoor go-kart track. Monaco Indoor Karting is setting up shop at the abandoned building in Berlin, New Jersey, and it's using 62,000 of the 92,000 square feet available. There is not yet an opening date, but the attraction is set to feature 32 go-karts, an arcade, rock climbing, and more. In local news, the Montclair Township Animal Shelter will be starting its first ever Pets for Vets program this year. From now until Saturday, December 3rd, any pet over a year old will be adoptable for only $5 for those who are in active duty, their immediate families, those who have left the military, veterans with disabilities, and those who have been honorably discharged. Pictures of all the pets that can be adopted are on Pet Finder under Montclair Township Animal Shelter. The current weather is sunny with a high of 57 and a low of 40, with a humidity level of 53 and good air quality with a level of 29. Looking at the rest of the week, tomorrow's going to be a high of 55, low of 35, sunny, and we're continuing that sun into Thursday with a high of 65 and a low of 37. But then it looks like Friday is going to bring some definite rain showers with a high of 68 and a low of 50. My name is Ian Love, and this has been your 8 a.m. news report. Yeah, Ian so Love. Good. Wait, you're telling me that this indoor carding place is I mean, literally in my town? I was just about to say, I was going to say this in the first hour, but... I really think it's important to acknowledge that there's going to be something to do in South <laughs> in town within like five minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, like 15 minutes. You know, you want to meet up? We can meet up. We'll meet up. <laughs> we'll meet up. We'll meet up. We'll go. We'll go karting. Real. You know? All right. Ella, my rising star. Okay. So in <laughs> hockey, we have, we have the Boston Bruins defeated St. Louis Blues three to one with goals from Patrick Berge- Bergeron. Jake DeBrusk and Nick Folingo. Last night, Jason Tatum, the love of my life, showed up again <laughs> and led the Boston no Celtics way. to win 109 to 106. He dropped 39 points, and Jalen Brown led the boards with nine rebounds. Tonight, a Montclair basketball season kicks off with the men's team playing at Brooklyn College at 7 15, and the women's team plays here against Vassar College at 7. Back to you. Wow, thank you so much, oh, Ella. I love you that. really went in with that. You were like, I'm ready. It's yeah. my time. <laughs> Real. I loved that. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're doing a segment today that is not Am I in the Wrong? No, no. Today we're doing MSU Confession. Arguably something worse. <laughs> something a little more <laughs> just a little more funky, fresh. We've got MSU Confessions today. So we are going to deep dive into these Montclair State Confessions from the Instagram account, Montclair State Confessions. If you've not heard of it, have you been living under a rock? Montclair State Confessions is a very big account here. Almost like TMZ, but MSU. And it's people submitting random (laughs) confessions. Yeah. Some of them are like, whoa, and some of them are just so random. (laughs) So we're going to get into it. We're going to read them. So it's also important to acknowledge that these are all allegations. You know, it's just like a lot of a lot of people just call them. Yeah, know? it's it's great. Um, it's a good time and it's anonymous. If, if for people who want to just say something, you just know, say things that are on their mind. And sometimes they're really out of pocket. Don't worry, we have made these clean for air. Uh, <laughs> so, 
Home this one is where? what we have titled Home Wreckers Be Wild. <laughs> so Anonymous says, quote, can people on this campus just respect people in relationships? Like, sheesh, you know how many times I'd be talking with people and they talk about trying to get with some guy or girl who's taken? Like, don't be a homewrecker. And if you're in a relationship, you're talking to these people. Just don't be in a relationship at all. End quote. That's real. You know, that was yeah. really That's real. Much to say that about that. It feels like yeah. human decency at that yeah. point. It's not you know, like a hot take. It was or a anything. quick reminder for those, you know, who are getting into people's relationships. Yeah, you know, like back off. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, it, like it's not your place. Not and your if place. you are in the relationship, it's time to move on. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> because, maybe you shouldn't be. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe you need to be single for a while because, I mean, college is the place to, you know. You know, people go feral. Learn college. things about yourself. And <laughs> mm. yeah. People do go feral. In Some people do go feral. Go. <laughs> you can see I did a little like a little hair, hair flip thing. Um, yeah, and I think the college is a place to find yourself, anyways. So I agree with this. Yeah, like, you know, you can you, know. you can find yourself by yourself and not within someone else's relationship. Hey, yo. You know, but it's true. There's there's love on this earth for if everybody. You, if you self love is the most important love. Real. If you can't love yourself. How are you supposed to love someone else? Tell them, Gabby. And be loyal to them. Amen. If you want to go and have many a friends, go have many a friends. But don't string along one person saying they're your best friend. Mm. Mm -hmm. Boom. That was literally just me saying friends instead of like. Partners. Partners. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> but that's so true. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. You're I know. Not wrong. I know I'm not wrong. Um, <laughs> going on to the next one. So we, this one is titled Dry Humor. Ah. An Anonymous says, quote, y'all are grown adults. Why do, <laughs> why do people leave their clothes in the dryer all day and all night and then get mad when someone takes them out? Set a timer. I'm going to start throwing clothes in the garbage because I'm sick of this. Be considerate of other people's time. Don't do laundry if you know you have class, want to take a nap uh, late at night, and you know you're not going to get it. I agree. You know what? I agree so I, hardcore. I feel so passionately about this because as an RA at Hot Crossings, this is such a huge issue. That because our, we have eight, well, set, no, eight washers. It's eight washers, I think. And, and eight a, dryers. And eight dryers, right. And For three buildings. And it's, the room is so small. And a lot of the times, like the poster said, they forget to set a timer. They forget to go get their stuff. And like, if you know that you're not going to feel like going to get it, don't, don't get do it. it like do you guys live on campus yeah yeah do you experience this oh for sure. yeah what what's the it like for you guys live in well i live in blanton so and right. half of the That'll time there's like there will be like laundry and, and there will be like washers and dryers sort of broken mm, so yeah. this is super frustrating i get it there's one specific dryer on my floor that it'll work like you can run it but it does not dry your clothes Ugh. oh those are the worst yeah. and also like the ch the group chats with my floor, nine percent of the time it's people saying, "Hey, your clothes are done. <laughs> hey, come get your clothes out of the washer or yeah. out of the dryer." Do you also live in Blanton? Mm -hmm. Got you. Yeah, um, it's just a campus wide issue. I also live in Blanton, and uh, I on my floor there's a mountain of clothes that just is being like moved from on top of the washer to on top of the dryer and so my biggest thing is i don't understand why would you just not bother to get your clothes mm. if you can't because then i don't want people touching my clothes right yeah i'm like sitting similar. there waiting for the thing to end like i have a, a minute or two left and i'm gonna watch it because i don't want anyone touching it right. it's mine that happened to me one time i That's literally good. was not kidding two minutes after my timer went off all of a sudden my clothes are like on top of a washer and i was like that's so gross like i don't want people seeing my stuff yeah like that's mm -hmm. embarrassing yeah. it's so embarrassing i you see my tidy ways I, <laughs> I will do the courtesy 10 15 minutes for the person to come get their stuff yeah, yeah and if i'm true. sitting there waiting for a half hour that's it i'm taking your stuff out that's because a decent that, human being thing to do yeah. and mm -hmm. if you get mad at me stinks stinks for you yeah because you know what i have to do my laundry I do. i'm on a time limit and I and I'm doing my job and I'm setting my timer. So why should you 
just get to do whatever exactly. you want. No, I will say one time I felt like an amazing human being because I just I just moved someone's stuff into the dryer for them. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. That's so sweet of You're you. You're better Thank than you. some of Thank our you. residents at Hot Crossings. I love y'all so so much, but y'all don't get your laundry <laughs> like ever <laughs> ever. There's I'm gonna try to describe this as best I can for our listeners. It's such a small room, right? And you know, hot crossings, like that's what we gotta work with, right? There will be piles and piles of laundry on every like we, there's three chairs to sit on. Every chair will piles. be taken with piles of laundry. Mm. I've and, figured out my laundry times. Yeah. It's good to do that. Cause that sometimes it's just it's everywhere. And then yeah. facilities has to come in and like after a while get rid of the clothes it's and awful. it's a lot. And it's not fair on your neighbors it's not fair on facilities no. to have to get rid of them it's not fair to the people who want to do their laundry it's just the worst thing is when, the worst thing is when there's people who take up like two washers which is fine and then they take up about six of the dryers mm, and i'm know. like you already washed them together just throw them in the dryer the- together yeah and You've like already done the deed the deed is done just throw it all together <laughs> the deed is done and like i also i also think for people who take a bunch of washers, like, mm-hmm. why did you get it that bad? You know, it's just yeah, like, like I, how when was the last time you did laundry? I, that- I see the the sign out log. We have a sign out log mm-hmm. for our washers and dryers. Sometimes and it's I, like they take up like four. Yeah, no, literally. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been that person, but I do it in the off hours at like twelve o'clock at night when yeah. nobody. But if you're doing it in the midday, yeah, at like a three p.m. to mm-hmm. six p.m., you're bugging. If I take I take two washers. Yeah, usually. two, three, eh. meh. Yeah. Two is good. Yeah. We only have two per room. Like there's two rooms per really. Floor. And yeah. each room has two washers and either two dryers or four dryers. The one room on my floor is four dryers. It's weird. But I'll usually only take one because also I don't have a lot of f- like free time like in a row mm-hmm. most days where I can do laundry. So most of the time I end up I do end up doing it later at night. Mm-hmm. But if it's like during the day, I will only take one because I don't want to have somebody walk in and get in and yeah. get a washer. But if it's like at night or if I'm just not feeling empathetic at all, I will take both <laughs> When the empathy is gone. My question is, do y'all have the sign out logs? No. no. It's just a, it's just a like, cross thing. We're the only ones who have it. Yeah, because I, so back in the day when I lived in Bone, back, <laughs> back, back. <laughs> Flashback sounds. Ago. Um, you would. I'd have to sit in the lounge to watch the laundry room to make sure somebody doesn't go in there and take my laundry out mid wash because that's, that's how annoying. big of a problem it was. Laundry. So, like, I understand because in Blanton it's a similar situation. Mm. There was like two washers, two dryers per floor, and that was like it. And people would come from other floors to use your washers Whoa. and dryers, and they would take your stuff out mid wash mid just to do their stuff yeah so you had to watch and then i moved to Denalo, and i was able to like go back up to my room and it was Mm, nice that's one like really good thing about blend washers is that once they start you cannot stop the washer for any reason it has to finish the dryer you can like open it anytime yeah but but the washer the washer once it starts you cannot open it up it has to finish it's just really unfortunate when you put in your laundry and you come back to your room and you realize that you left a sock on the floor (laughs) like (laughs) now the socks dirty until i have another washer and then if you the thought just came to my mind if you're someone who even thinks about doing a whole wash for one sock i hate you <laughs> no i agree if like, i ever walked into that i would start sobbing if you use a whole dryer for one sock oh, just <laughs> let it air dry to a whole tide pod inflation is real and tide pods are expensive <laughs> exactly that's overkill awful zero out of ten you know what else is a zero out of ten what narcs oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here is, so this one is titled NARC. <laughs> no. An anonymous says, quote, I am said STEM student who's screenshotting the group me chats to show professors. This is simply because you have become lazy. You're paying for an education and choosing not to receive it. It is unfair to those who are passionate about school and care about what they do. If any of you want to make it in the real world, you're going to need the brain power to take a simple 12 question quiz on something that has to do with your future career. So here's what I say to you, poster, or anonymous quoter. We don't condone cheating, by the way. No, we don't. But here's the issue. Don't join the group me, then. 
Mm. That's mm. the group me is to help each other out. And if you don't like that we help each other out, then I think you need to leave because that's just wrong. Also, why does what is me with my education have anything to do with you? Stay in your lane. That's real. I that that's true. I see both sides to it because it's like I know people have the thought in their head like if you see something you say something you know what I mean yeah or like and I get it to the point of like you know I'm putting in all this effort and these people aren't but also that's you putting in the effort for your degree yeah, what what does their degree have to do with you at that point let them face the consequences of their yeah. own actions don't feel like you have to like step in and yeah waking them up to the real world because like I, I feel like the way this I'm not even so much concerned with them doing the action. It's so much of how they said it. You know how what I mean? rest they are. About I it. just it feels like they have some sort of savior complex because at the I think at the end of the day, yeah. though they think that they're waking people up, it mm-hmm. kind of just is making them mad. I don't think it's, it's making me mad. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I'm like, that's just not gonna avoid this situation. I no. think like, and I'm not saying because it won't do anything, don't say anything. I'm saying more so of if you have this idea of, yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. help. I'm gonna wake these people up to the real world. That doesn't quite make any sense because you're mm-hmm. not a parent. Like you're not their parent. Here was my issue. My issue was the factor that they, oh my gosh, I just blanked. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to say in terms of this is just, I understand the frustration of like, let's say, I think where I would really, really understand this is if it was a really big exam. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know that what I mean? Yes. That is right. absolutely, completely unfair. Yeah. And you cannot do that. Also, if the teacher asks and you don't participate and you want to save yourself, mm. I get it. Don't mm-hmm. go out of your way. But like, yeah. Like a 12 question simple quiz, maybe just like a exit ticket. Not saying yeah. you should cheat, but no, like, also is not condoned. Cheating is not condoned, but also it's important to just know the information. Yeah. And I think group me's group me's are very like helping. They're yeah, helpful. They're helpful for like assignments and collaborating with your peers, but I also feel like they also do play a factor in the academic dishonesty department yes, of in course. terms of cheating and stuff like that. And I completely understand why this person would be frustrated. I do also understand why the point that you brought up is why did you join the group me in the first place exactly. and i to be an art is my assumption. <laughs> i i also think like when you join a group me i think there's this, this implied thing where uh, people are going to ask those questions even they when you do. don't necessarily want to ask any questions or cheat yourself being in there kind of implicates you in the situation yeah. and you sign up for that when you join a group me of course and or complaining about the professor Right. Or complain about the I do, that's in fact, too. do that. But that's the hard part about it is just like you, one, need to study for a 12 question quiz so then you can avoid these situations. And two, if you're a person who's frustrated by somebody who's cheating, like we're not going to discourage you from speaking up because you're that's it completely within your right. But it's also important to recognize, like, you know, you might not be saving someone from the real world. No, you're just you might just them. make be making them mad. Maybe they maybe they slept in or they or they fell asleep while studying. They didn't get to study and they needed to pass this quiz to pass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't know. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> don't laugh at me, emo. Anyways, on that note, while emo laughs at me, we're gonna take a quick break here on the morning buzz on ninety point three WMSC Upper Montclair. And when we come back, we've got some little entertainment stories for you. Emo, stop laughing. Ugh. Be right back.
morning buzz. Yay. Are you excited? You should be because we're back. Always. You are listening to the morning buzz. And we have entertainment news. The good stuff, you know? So are we ready? Yeah. Are yeah. we ready? Oh, babe, ready to bumble? Yeah. Good. You're ready. Emo, <laughs> emo's quiet. You're okay so monster renewed for season two and three at netflix as anthology the watcher are renewed for season two netflix is going the anthology route with monster with the streaming streamer ordering two additional seasons of the series netflix has also ordered a season two of the watcher both shows were created by ryan murphy and ian brennan monster launched september 21st while the watcher debuted on october 13th the first season of monster was officially titled Dahmer monster the jeffrey Dahmer story and followed the life and crimes of the infamous serial killer according to Inf- netflix the two new installments will each focus on quote other monstrous figures who have impacted society and quote, the Watcher is loosely based on a true story that follows a family that moves into their dream home, only beginning to re- only to begin to receive mysterious letters from someone calling themselves the Watcher. So why? Here's my question. And I don't know. That's, Maybe somebody can give it a different opinion. That would be the entire question right there. Why? Why? And that, uh, that is my question. Why is there a, se- a season two coming and three as well of Monster? Because it's literally a Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Mm-hmm. So why are they changing the name of the show just to Monster? Just so they can add more serial killers. It does like I thought that after the reception of Dahmer that they would realize, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to make these shows. But apparently no. Apparently money is more important than anything else mm. but yeah. i mean they're going to continue to make these shows that's nonetheless true. because people are intrigued that's true and i buy stories nature, like these though. yeah human nature is like always fascinated with of course I, other people's I am business very, well that and just like things like this because you know when your brain doesn't work that way you're like why does their brain work that way like right. how does that happen um i am one of those people i like watching them uh like the tr- the crime things oh i watched the show and yeah like it like it wasn't boring but also like part of it felt like it felt weird to watch at points that i'm like this feels wrong i think it felt wrong especially because some of the um families of the victims had were like hey we didn't approve of this we don't want this to be resurfacing again like Mm -hmm. It, it was a trauma that happened in our family. Like, we don't want to, you know, see see shows made about it and, you know, people acting like our family member, which I very much understand and I very much get it. I think they there's probably different ways that they could do this. Uh, I know documentaries are always a way to do it. Right. And um, there's nothing wrong with documentaries no. and true crime shows and things like that, because I think the difference here is that this goes into the actual like putting yourself into the yeah. crime when true crime stories and documentaries kind of walk you through in a different way and you yeah. get the personal accounts from different people you get like glimpses of case files and things like that and looking at it from that lens is a lot easier in, in my opinion mm-hmm. to consume rather than a story that is kind of made to be like a or, fictional telling i think also maybe we wait until the you know immediate generation following the victims is mm. kind of like you think so yeah. yeah like wait for it to basically be like well the victims aren't really relevant to the people anymore not that they're not relevant but you know what i mean like family wise like yeah it wouldn't affect them directly so maybe it wouldn't you know also like the issue with shows like this is that especially because of internet culture today there are going to be people who obsess over it way too much and Mm. in the absolute worst ways like i wasn't out and about on halloween this year Mm -hmm. but i guarantee you that there would have been a handful of people who were dressed up oh yeah it's dumber yeah Yeah. which is like I think like, they were saying that like sales on like Dahmer looking glasses yeah, like, went yeah. up, which like, is horrifying. Yeah. That's horrifying. So and I don't want people to romanticize these murderers, no. and that's what people do. Especially, for example, when um 
Nicholas uh, Cruz was being prosecuted for the what school was that shooting? I forgot the school. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Parkland, yes. Um, when he was getting prosecuted and stuff, people would romanticize him, mm. and it's sickening. It's gross. It's, it's absolutely so gross. gross. The problem here is like when you have actors playing any part, a lot of people like to romanticize it. But you know you what's know what so I mean? interesting is like even like Evan Peters plays Dahmer, if you did not know. Yeah. Um, and he like felt disgusted with himself playing Dahmer because he would get he because you know method acting they get so into it whatever um and he was like like i hated it like he's like i hated playing Dahmer. at the same time as like you know i mean it was a role it was a good role he played it well you know he he felt awful having to insert yourself into into that that, yeah. yeah and it's like if the person playing the character is like disgusted with themselves maybe you shouldn't keep going with it maybe maybe or maybe you know you shouldn't be romanticizing it exactly. just a just a thought for sure you know yeah there were a few too many moments in the show where i step back and like are they trying to make us sympathize with this guy right now yeah you know what's gonna happen yeah, yeah. trying to like make us feel a little bit part of me wonders is it were they trying to make us sympathize with him or were they just trying to like get into the head so much Mm. that it like it almost feels as though because that's how you know that's probably what Dahmer would do is you know try and get you to sympathize with him I also I I really appreciate Ian's point just because I think back to the difference between telling it through a documentary style and this way is because when you put it in the in the hands of producers and screenwriters who weren't there and what didn't really experience it it's not going to be as like you can do as much research as you can but it mm. may not be as accurate and it may be mishandled as opposed to just going directly to the source going directly to the investigators yeah. and the people who were there and you know it's just a difference between wanting to go to journalistic route or just wanting yeah. to go the hollywood route but in this particular case, it's almost distasteful to go the Hollywood route just for the sake yeah. of this. Story. You know, what's so interesting, though, is that I did read a lot about how this was actually very accurate. Like it wasn't a documentary. It was Hollywood. The Evan there were, one? Yeah. And it was like there was a lot of things that were very accurate, like down to the down to the apartment, mm. like which is incredibly accurate. So, I mean, but like, why did they have to make it? Like, like, why would the why is that a big detail that the apartment has to be super accurate? Mm. Did you ever watch that the movie with um Ross Lynch that came out a few years ago? Oh, I, I wanted to, no, but I, I felt weird about yet. it. But did you? No, but I, I just I I think the romanticism was probably not to that level in the Netflix one, just because like yeah. girls love Ross Lynch. That's so true. if he played Dahmer in the Netflix one, I think. It would have been worse. Yeah, and I think yeah. it also it takes away from the story. Yeah, again, exactly. When you, like have people on Tumblr and Reddit yeah. so like, doing if... these like fanfics of yeah. Dahmer. Yeah, and it's just like, how did we get here? I do find you know, it. I do find it interesting that they had um Ross Lynch play Dahmer. Mm-hmm. Just like I find mm-hmm. it interesting that like they're having Timothy Chalamet play Wonka. It's very real, and I'm really fascinated about talking about this because i feel really strongly yeah. about it so fun fact timothy chalamet is willy wonka and his performance was praised by his co-star keegan michael key is giving me slight hope for this film because i was not necessarily happy for it when it got announced but fans are eager to see timothy timothy return as willy wonka in the upcoming reboot of Willy Won- of Wonka that has been given a worthy teaser in the form of Keegan Michael Key's endorsement. The comedian whose co-star with Chalamet in the upcoming production spoke to the Hollywood reporter about the actor's turn to the film. In the interview, he praised 26-year-old's willingness to try anything while portraying the iconic character, calling him a delicious artist. What a uh, way, what a way to put it. I Yummy. I, I feel like that works with the Willy Wonka theme. Yeah, that does. Uh, yes, but no. It does. So Keegan-Michael Key said, quote, there's this wonderful effortlessness about how he plays Wonka, not to mention the fact that there's this hopeful quality that he gives to the character, a kind of indomitable quality that he'll never quit. He's always up for the next thing. And Timothy Chalamet, what can I say? This kid 
you know, he drips charisma and a wonderful confidence. He's just a really delicious artist. Please stop saying that. I'm, it was not me. I know. It's, it's Keegan-Michael Key. Well, Keegan-Michael Key needs so much <laughs> job. Yummy artist. But no. he also responded to Chalamet's description of the film during a sit-down with British Vogue last month, in which he called the production so sincere and so joyous. The Oscar, Oscar nominee thrilled fans last October when he shared the first look image of himself in the role and Wonka is set for release December 15th 2023 I don't like Timothy Chalamet (laughs) hot take I'm indifferent I don't like him I think he's just I think he's just a weird little human I just think of the um of him and Pete Davidson's rap from SNL. Oh, oh that's that was good. That's the best thing that came out of Timothy Chalamet. Timothy who? Shablagoo. Mm. <laughs> Yummy. Delicious uh, even. Deli- <laughs> Gabagool. Gabagool. I don't know. I don't, I can't see. Okay, so when I think of Willy Wonka, I think of the Johnny Depp Willy Wonka. Yeah. Of course. Um, it's a classic. Creepy in all the right ways. And just a character, nonetheless. I feel like the original Willy Wonka, like he's fine, but it, it's Wilder. not the same. Yeah, he's not, but it's not the same energy. Wow, my stomach just growled. So original hard right superiority. There. Yeah, we're talking about yeah, Willy Wonka chocolate. You know? But we don't. Oh yeah, I'm just so hungry. We have another. I don't want. I don't want Timothy. I don't think he'd be a good one. I'm I sorry. Right? He's more weird. drama actor. I also think it's interesting that he's in a musical. And the yeah. fact that he has to sing. I saw a little snippet of him singing. It wasn't awful, uh, but considering that at least we have a good bit of theater people in the room yeah. where we can argue that he probably is not the best fit for a musical, in my opinion. Maybe aesthetically, he it, like could probably yeah. give off like really weird, uh, awkward, like Willy Wonka vibes. But I haven't yeah. heard him sing. I mean, Timothy Charizard is really... <laughs> <laughs> Is really just a drama actor more to me. I agree. And I just don't think Willy Wonka is the root for him. Because um, Call Me By Your Name was brilliant. His acting in that was yeah, great. Brilliant. Of course. Absolutely, Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Uh, <laughs> why, Lara, do you sound like a 70-year-old smoker when you chime in? <laughs> Thank She's you. She's canceled. Lara is canceled. She's canceled. Get it to a nursing home. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all to say, I'm I will probably watch it just oh, yeah, because just I'm wanna... curious. Yeah. But as someone who very much consumes theater, maybe a little too much, I I don't think this but will be But you know what they say? Good. Curiosity killed the cat. I'm allergic to cats, guys. Oh, so it's vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of that's a lot of death right there. So maybe we should move along. Maybe we should. Wow. Maybe we should. Let me put my cat on the mic. Wow. Speaking, speaking of death, do you know that someone made an Oculus Rift that could kill you? I'm sorry. What did you just say? I <laughs> hold on. Like pause. Reverse. Yeah, I said. What? I said the thing. So. The creator of the Oculus Rift built a VR headset that could kill you for real. For real? For real. For real, for real. Super for real. So Palmer Lucky, the creator of the original Oculus Rift headset, says he modified a VR headset such that it can kill the user for real. The provocative art project is inspired by the anime by the anime Sword Art Online, in which players who are trapped in VR die for real if they die in the virtual world. In the anime Sword Art Online, November 6, 2022, is the day in which the VRMMO, I don't, yeah, goes public. Mm, wow. And the, the same day, the players learn the dire circumstances of their situation. As the story goes, unbeknownst to those who join the game, the Nerve Gear VR headset they are wearing it will kill them in real life if they die in the virtual world. They will also die if someone attempts to remove the headset from their real body. Oh, there's... Though there's a long history of anime based on VR, Sword Art Online rose to popularity right around the time the Oculus Rift was starting to gain traction through its record-breaking 2012 Kickstarter. Lucky, the creator of the Oculus Rift, recounts the many people that asked him if he knew of the anime Sword Art Online at the time that he was getting the newly founded company Oculus off the ground. 
Not only did Lucky know of the series, but he also has become something of a mega fan, the kind that would receive figurines of himself and his wife dressed as the show's main characters as wedding gifts. Wow. That's kind of cute. That is adorable. Though Lucky's unique experiences with a VR pioneer, mega fan Sword Art Online, and later founding a defense technology company, there could hardly be someone more apt to do what came next. On November 6, 2022, literally two days ago, that significant date in Sword Art Online, Lucky claims he made a headset capable of killing its users via three explosive charges that could be triggered if the player dies in virtual reality. That's a lot to take in. That is horrifying. So is it so... I have so many questions legality um <laughs> no. questions the law so would this count as i don't know if i can say this one or, i don't know i probably won't would this count as um death by self mm. death by other or death by other self <laughs> interesting like how where would it hold up in a court of law because definitely yeah. this is going to court yeah interesting mm-hmm. This is probably one of those things where... Because, um, like, yeah, you buy it yourself and you're choosing to do this. Yeah. But also, like, the company made it to do this. Our engineering director, Mike Foley, just <laughs> said in our chat, Blue Shell. <laughs> Goodbye. That's so real, though. Like, you, Blue Shell and Mario Kart, you're done. You're done. You are done. Absolutely. Finish line, you won't even reach. I, I think, I think <laughs> if you put me on Rainbow Road in a virtual reality, I'm done. Immediately, I'm gone. <laughs> two three, seconds in, I'm gone. Two, two, one, start. Three, two, one, goodbye. Three, two, one, oh, done. done. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. Like, finish him, finish him, finish him for real. Super Smash Bros. You're done. <laughs> oh, my wait, God. no, that's a great question, though. What game? Would you, immediately, no, what game would you immediately lose in <laughs> all of them oh that's a good i think i have a better chance in call of duty than i do in mario kart if we're really? being honest and i'm bad at both I'm you know at, like playing chess though like, oh yeah check me we bowling we bowling strike out <laughs> literally strike out <laughs> i wouldn't mind any game i just don't want it to be fortnite I would oh, no. really oh, feel mortified yeah. to the highest extent if I got booted off this earth by an eight year old. <laughs> Wait, pause. Well, can we go back? Can we go back to what Ella said about Wee Bowling? Okay. Hear how me you, out. How do you lose in Wee Bowling? No, exactly. yeah, no, hear me out. Exactly. You, if you let the ball go backwards and all the people jump and spin, that's it. Yeah, that's game over. That's I'd have to be gone within the three rounds. <laughs> if if you that's the last thing I it. saw before I went, Wow. wow and then they all just jump and spin Honestly, and you're just no, done i think i would just like go message. chill in we sports resort like that's oh, so oh, oh yeah. yeah that's so real we sports oh, oh, oh. Jump. <laughs> hi lara just lara me. and mike foley are now in studio <laughs> hi friends that was a lot <laughs> so much I, okay well so I ran into terry's theme. yeah and then i got dumped but <laughs> i said out that dumped. one that was a red flag I know. it's okay it's okay but hi friends what game oh would God. you lose immediately what game would i lose in here really? yeah barbie's island adventure <laughs> on the pc you're canceled <laughs> you're <laughs> done you're absolutely canceled oh i have what a question are you about to play uh, should I? No. Oh, I think Lara's gonna play something, and I'm worried. Is it the desert? The, the Mario <laughs> desert. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> it's about the theme. Okay. Please do it. <laughs> That's all you're getting from me. I wanted to hear the Wii Sports music. <laughs> Fine. Just make it low and we could just talk That's over it. That's the last thing I hear. Okay, we can't go all the way because then I'm going to have to put it in Spinatron. So then. Yeah. Um, so no. <laughs> well, we ex- the desert theme for Mario, we no. expected. Lara constantly plays the desert theme for Mario. No. Just they need a sample. Taste. Just so you know exactly what we're talking about, listener. I need that Punisher music. Now we're no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Why is Gaethje on the camera? Oh, wait, why is Gaethje on the camera? There's a lot going on. 
Hey. Chaotic bug time, indeed. It's the messy hour. Did y'all okay. play video games when you were young? She, she and if so, I, yeah. what younger games? I liked you Kirby. Ooh. The one on the DS? I liked Kirby on the actual platform. Kirby? Uh, PS5 or something? Or no, PS5. PS5? PS5? Okay, we're done here. There's Here's the thing. people in studio. I the most advanced system I had as a kid was a Wii. We had a Wii yeah. and a PlayStation 2. We before there was Super Smash. I never had a copy of Super Smash Bros. For me, I love Super always Smash Bros. Marvel Legends Rise of the Imperfects. Ooh. And okay. I was so bad at that Her. game, but I still had so much fun. Her. Would you die in the game? Uh yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you know, at least you'll you'll go doing something you love. Now I really you know? want to play Wii Sports. What about like just dance and then the huh? like like me, that. I, that's something I would play in. Oh my! God. I would do that. I feel like no I could. way. That I would be. I would. I one hundred percent buy the Oculus that does that for sure. Just, for just to pop oh, a bucket, yeah. polka dot it, and oh, then that's the way to go. I think that's the way to go. Do just dance the stairway to heaven, and it is a literally <gasps> a stairway. To that's amazing. Oh, that would be cool. That'd be really good. That's, that's fun. <laughs> Stunning. Brilliant. absolutely brilliant oh, yeah. so brilliant i think that was amazing i don't know i i so <laughs> i don't know how we can come back from that i feel That's like you need so to take like a 15 second break to like come back from that so we'll be back here on the morning buzz in literally like 30 seconds Morning buzz! Yay! Yay! That was the sound of the police. I feel like that was a great one. I'm so glad we had that, that was moment good. together. So, it's okay. here's the thing. Twitter. 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 We're talking about Twitter. Are you okay with that? You have to be okay with that because I'm making you okay with that. Twitter now asks some fired empl- workers to please come back. Please come back. They got fired and now they're like, oh. We fired too many. Twitter, after laying off roughly half the company on Friday following Elon Musk's $44 billion acquisition, is now reaching out to dozens of employees who lost their jobs and asking them to return. Some of those who are being asked to return were laid off by mistake, according to two people familiar with the moves. Others were let go before management realized that their work and experience may be necessary to build the new features Musk envisions. The people said asking not to be identified discussing private information. Twitter cut close to 3,700 people this week. That's so many. Via email as a way to trim costs following Musk's acquisition, which closed in late October. Many employees learned that they lost their job after their access to company-wide systems like email and Slack were suddenly suspended. The requests for employees to return demonstrate how rushed and chaotic the process was. A Twitter spokesperson did not reply to a request for comment. Twitter's plan to hire back workers was previously reported by Platformer. I'm sorry, but how's that an accident? Like, oh, sorry, oh, we accidentally oh, let you so go. Came into the mess. And I'm so sorry, but please come back. That's just their way of being like, we made a mistake. Mm-hmm. We messed up. Please come back. If I were somebody who got let go and then almost immediately asked to come back, I'd have like, I have stipulations. I'd be like, okay. Mm, I'd be like, what what are you going to fire me? Oh, I'd be like, you can better double my Yeah, like, I want a nice little... Little gabagoo. A little little conversation, a little bonus. A little chunk of money. I want a little... I want a little... What makes the world? I want a little ball of mots. The the mots. The mots ball. (laughs) The mots ball. I love mots. Maybe maybe it's throwing a free Tesla. I don't know. know, Oh, yeah. Elon Musk. A little promotion. A little promotion, too. Yeah. Yeah, for the resume. I think that'd be the way. A recommendation (laughs) letter for my next job. Thanks. For my next job. Because I don't want to be here. 
because you obviously don't want to keep me and that's okay. it's like insane how big of a company like could fully make this quote-unquote mistake it's elon musk come on now but i think he should know better you know he's elon and that's all i have to say about elon but i also think like you know, there's other little lackeys that are in charge of probably the firing process. And yeah, the he probably was like, stuff. fire 3,700 and let me know how it goes. And then they were like, oh, bad, bad choice, Elon. And then he was like, mm, mm-hmm. tell him it was a mistake. Yeah. Tell him it was an accident. Come oh. back. And that's what they, and that's probably how it went. Sally. I feel like this is exactly how it went. I want to get into like the inner workings of the Twitter company now. Really? Huh. Just because I want to know what's going on. Like, That's should true. I like secret spy in there and like hey, I'm like hey, I'm your new How y'all doing? doing? They'd be like, who are you? I'd be like, your employee. The one of your Here's one the of the employees you so fired. Many. Yeah, <laughs> you fired me. You don't remember? How oh, dare you not remember <laughs> that you fired me? Now give me money. <laughs> now give me the money. Yes, Ian. <laughs> I'm like, there's probably so many employees that there's no way that they can remember all of them, right? Well, I'm sure there are little branches that like have or, like their some own sort of database and, stuff. and all that good jazz. And, like, you don't know my name? What do you mean you don't know my name? Yeah, true. And like, also, I feel like it's so heartbreaking to hear that you lost your job over email or Slack. Do you use Slack at the rec? Yeah, yeah. The and, marketing like, team uses Slack. I'm sorry if if I heard through. Email's one thing because that's pretty formal, I'd say. But Slack, if I find out I lost my job through Slack, it's literally like a group me. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't know what Slack is, it's literally corporate Discord. Corporate Discord. That's all it is. That's it. It's literally corporate Discord. And I feel like that's a little low blow to just be like, hey, sorry, um, you're fired over Slack. A little ping from Slack. Sorry, bestie, you're fired. Yeah. Like, you're fired. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did we talk about that last week, Cat in the Hat? I think so. Yeah. You know, it comes back. Humber Flube. Cat in the Hat comes back. I think <gasps> that's something. Oh, I feel like that should be like... That's a book. The sequel. That is the sequel, actually. There is? I, I like, refuse to believe this information. You know... Cat in the Hat comes back. There's no way. There's no way. I'm pretty sure there's a sequel to the... In the Hat comes back. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's literally the book. She's right. Why didn't they make a movie for it? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we could leave it at the one movie. Uh, I feel like I it. I feel like it was enough. It was <laughs> enough. And you told me you didn't like the. Oh, I love more than that. I didn't like it. You didn't well, like it. When was the last time you watched it, Ella? It was like maybe nine. Okay, it freaked me out when I was nine too. <laughs> Try it again. Um, <laughs> Try it again. It's actually funny. It's actually super funny, and there's a lot of like adult jokes in it that like you would never. Oh my god, I love them. They're yeah. so good when he's like making the cupcakes. Yeah, oh, so funny. Those are funny. What a good time. But you know, for the sake of time, Ian Toad. Yes, Ian and his lovely, lovely newscast mentioned these really toxic toads, and we gotta get into it because it's such an interesting thing. So the National Park Service wants humans to stop licking this particular toad, and it's just really interesting. Yeah, I don't think people were licking toads. I didn't. Think I guess so. they are. I though. guess they are. That's the thing on like cartoons that like they made fun of. No, yeah, it you know seems, you would. Think. It seems to be that's not the case. But you know, art imitates life. <laughs> so <laughs> go yeah. go into any any park, and there's often reminders to refrain from going near, petting, or feed, feeding the wildlife at all. Not licking strange animals, you know, was said to be a given until now. The National Park Service has added tongue contact with the sonoran desert toad among its various warnings for park visitors the agency wrote on facebook this past past week quote as we say with most things you come across in the national park when it comes to a banana slug unfamiliar mushrooms or a large toad with glowing eyes in the dead of night please refrain from licking The toad, also known as the Colorado River toad, is about seven inches in size and carries a weak, low-pitched ribbit sound. But the creature is far from harmless. Sonoran desert toads secrete a potent potent toxin that can be making people sick if they touch it or get the poison in their mouth. Despite the risks, some people have discovered that the toad's toxic secretions contain a powerful hallucinogen. According to the state's Department of Game and Fish, in recent years, smoking the amphibian secretions has grown in popularity so much so 
Yeah, girl. What a moment. So much so that the species is even considered threatened, at least in New Mexico, due to collectors that want to use the animal for drug use. I have so many questions for this one as well. What are your questions? How many people have licked this toad? It has to be a good amount. Also, how did we discover? Yeah, who was the first person to think? I'm gonna like that toad. There's like, they were like it. it was probably like a dare. They were probably like, yo, bro, I'll give you five bucks if you go <laughs> lick that toad. Not and either. then all of a sudden they're just wicking out. And then they're like, whoa, dude. Yeah, that's a lot. I I'm really is it just this toad that you're not supposed to lick? The Colorado yes. toad. Yes. To this <laughs> you can lick other toads. Yeah, <laughs> just not this one. You can lick the toads you want, just like not this one. Yeah. yeah. Just not the this Colorado one's just a little one. too. Yeah. For our folks who can't get ca- sarcasm, please don't do that. <laughs> I not- mean, if you want to. <laughs> if you want to, we can't stop you. But I don't know why you'd want to. But well, the but the National Park Service says don't like this one at least <laughs> so. also not the one from mario kart but that's <laughs> yeah you know if <laughs> please don't lick toad from mario kart <laughs> consent is important <laughs> consent is really I'm important we're on a line right now <laughs> we are on a line but we are on line that's even we are <laughs> online as well Whoa, that's, that's what meta makes <laughs> meta makes hey mom hi wmcradio.com but huh <laughs> The surprise that wasn't I, said in the grandma smoker voice. I love. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I love grandmama. I mean, but also you have to think about it. In some some countries and all, people do eat frog, or like that's toad. true. Like frog legs. So like, like yeah, they eat actual frog. Oh, why what, why, why is species toad's legs so long? <laughs> Anyways, continuing on. It just it depends on the species, but yeah. like obviously so with this one, this is more of them like, hey, don't take this one. Yeah, this one's not the one to eat. <laughs> I think this toad looks like every other toad, so I don't know how people are supposed to know which one to like and which one not to. Do you look at toads quite often now? Well, I, look, I, I think it's a picture of it, and I'm like, how is this toad special? Like, I mean, it must like, look at a toad and say, that's not, not, like, just not like any toad, you know? They're no, like, true. this one looks like every other one, so just don't do it. Thanks. <laughs> that, yep, yep, that's he's a big boy. Yeah, he or a little girl. I don't judge. Ian showed me the picture at first, and I was like, "These, these things are like beefy, they, you they know, are. like they're kind of jack, like the shoulder, the broad shoulders and stuff." Like generic toad. That'd be something I'd be a little they afraid of. Different. No, they're <laughs> super built, built different. different. Like, like I told you earlier, I would dap that dude up. You know, like I would respect him. He showed my door. He can come chill. He okay. can come chill. So- Basically, it looks like every other toad. <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm although, saying. Although this, one's pretty, one although this one's pretty, although this one's pretty like thick, whereas mm. the, these <laughs> other ones are not. As... So you're saying the the toad not to to lick so is thick. If you see a skinny you're toad, done. you can. Eat it. <laughs> Basically, basically, if you see a skinny one, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. That's not very <laughs> inclusive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all about body positivity here on the right. <laughs> Except when it comes Except to toads. toads. Except the toads. I think we need to move on to Pikachu. <laughs> yes. My, my favorite toad. My favorite Pikachu. My favorite Pokemon <laughs> is the Colorado River. <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon? Mine is um Jigglypuff. Man dressed as Pikachu <laughs> ran from me on modified lawn mowa pop say. In what in what the Rochdale Police Department, <laughs> what is the town called Rochdale? <laughs> assured was a first. An officer found himself in pursuit with a 19-year-old dressed as Pikachu yesterday night, giving both police and witnesses a night to remember. The department wrote in a news release. Man charged after 12k money of Pokemon cards were stolen. Officers say the suspect had been recklessly driving a modified lawnmower through the town with a trailer in tow, while children dressed as ghosts and ghouls prowl the streets in pursuit of candy. So this was from Halloween. (laughs) A deputy located the erratic lawnmower driver and quickly realized it was no ordinary driver, but rather a Pokemon, the lawnmower Pikachu. That's something to catch in Pokemon Go. Quote, po- police wrote, quote, the deputy attempted to make a traffic stop on the mower. Unfortunately, Pikachu turned around, flipped the deputy off, and continued on, end quote. Florida man? Nah, Indiana man. Real. Or individual, we don't know. Um, Poke- so 
that's my favorite Pokemon. I think I want to catch that in Pokemon Go. I feel like you'd get a lot. You'd like level up immediately. You it's know? the 12K in Pokemon cards for me. Mm-hmm. While dressed as Pikachu. While dressed as Pikachu. What a <laughs> that crime is to be committed. Yeah, I think that's probably the most interesting crime you I've know, seen. I have a friend who has all the Pokemon and their numbers memorized. Um, oh. I've spoken about him on live on air before. And I feel like this would be him. That's true. I, I don't even know your friend, but I feel Alex. Is this you? Did you go Alex? to Indiana for a night? Did you go to Indiana and take some Here on 90.3 Pokemon WMSC Claire? Claire? Upper Montclair? Wow, you got that for me. Yeah. Wow. Because unfortunately, we've hit 9 a.m., but I do want to say that, you know, if <laughs> speed round, what's your favorite Pokemon? Um, uh, uh, Zapdos. I don't know. That's the first one that came to Okay, play. fire. What's your favorite Pokemon? No idea. Pikachu. Whalmer. Whalmer. Okay, mine's Jigglypuff. That's all we... Emo! Emo! Uh, she doesn't know. What's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, pick one for me. Um, Charizard. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. This has been the Morning Buzz here on 90.3 WMSC. Up in Montclair. What? <laughs> My boyfriend just texted me, nose pass. Do you, do you okay, all know that he done. was like Squidward's house, basically? Okay, you're done. Anyways, this has been... The morning bus here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. We love you so, so much, we listeners. We love you, listeners. We hope you love us back. Um, this cannot be a one-sided relationship. Thanks. Yes, yeah, real. That's <laughs> it's gotta be real love. You real know? love. We need your loyalty. So thank you for listening. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Right, right now. Oh my god, it's I know why.